What time is it? It's Packard Folks at Time. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash Packard Folks at where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokes at and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at Stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokes at and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining me tonight... From the far east coast is Joe Unseen. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> this is different from any other night. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, man? <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. That's what I said. <laughs> and join us tonight also from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic 9. I'm not a crook. <laughs> Wait, did I say that out loud? Oh, <laughs> Hell oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us also from Texas, I got it right this time, <laughs> is the quiet atheist. If a man is built like a brick shit house, can he shit bricks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope not. That would be damn fucking painful. <laughs> would like to remind everybody that uh, we have uber conference going and if you would like to join in on our conversation tonight you can call 857-216-3200 use pin number 35368 or go to uber that's u-b-e-r the word conference.com slash packard pokes at okay and tonight we're doing our okay let's talk segment and in our government we have this thing called the Constitution. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those pieces of our Constitution, Article 6, Paragraph 3, it reads, The senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several state legislatures and all the executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Which brings us to our topic tonight of faith in politics. Okay, everybody, let's talk. Ben Carson is a religious nut job running for office. He actually has pretty good numbers. He's sitting at about 18%, 16%, just underneath the other idiot, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And he has been going off on this thing where he said recently that if you want to run for office, you should basically be a Christian. Actually, he, he said, well, I don't believe Muslims should be allowed to be president. Actually, uh, let me, let me uh, play that clip right now. Should a president's faith matter? Should your faith matter to voters? Well, I guess it depends on what that faith is. If, if it's inconsistent uh, with the values and principles of America, then of course it should matter. But uh, if it fits within the realm of, uh, of America and consistent with the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, no problem. So do you believe that uh, Islam is consistent with the Constitution? Uh, no, I, don't, I do not. Do I, I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation i absolutely would not agree with that yeah he doesn't understand what he just fucking said he said that basically you can't be a muslim and he fucking doubled down on this he he basically had said the same thing he said that uh when asked to clarify if whether he believes islam is con, uh, consistent with the constitution carlson said no i do not i would not advocate we put a muslim in charge of this nation thoughts anybody i saw a ben carson sign on the side of the road today oh did you yeah, it was over in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. Really? Of all places. True blue uh, New England. It was near the uh, the federal prison that Orange is the New Black is based on, but it was on the side of the road, and I'm driving along, and 
I saw the sign and it said like you know Ben Carson for president. I was like, get out of here. Yeah, he's... somebody drove up to New Hampshire, stole that, and brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the thing that I don't understand about Ben Carson, I don't understand how someone could be so brilliant and so fucking dumb at the same time. Oh yeah, he he's supposedly a neurosurgeon. I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and he does not believe in evolution, and he doesn't believe in the Big Bang. He he's. <laughs> He yeah. actually he came out and said that the the Big Bang is a basically a big hoax and he used a straw man argument, you know the one where you say, oh if a tornado went through a junkyard and for an infinite amount of time, then it was just gonna produce a point seven forty seven. I'm like, what? <laughs> he Before believes that. on foul on foulism, which is that uh, the devil pre created all the dinosaur bones and everything to fool us. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 you know I mean he obviously you books, know doesn't know a damn thing school. about the Constitution because it's it's exactly the opposite of what he's saying. But a lot of, you get a lot of these people that really take advantage of the Constitution, and you get a lot of them that think it's okay to just trample on what the founding fathers put into place. And yeah, it, it's worthless, man. These people are out of their minds. Right. One of the clips I have available, which we'll play here in a little while, is that he goes off on the scientists to talk about evolution and say, oh, those highfalutin scientists. I'm like, highfalutin? Highfalutin? Really? <laughs> and he's, he's then he turns around and says, oh, the scientists that don't believe in evolution, those ones are correct. Like, one, that's not their field. They have nothing to fucking say about it. And, and and two, <laughs> it just they're such a small group. They, they they don't know anything of what they're talking about. Comments? Anybody? Dead air. Dead air. Dead air. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was muted for a second. I was talking to my son. Okay. <laughs> so you you mentioned the Ben Carson's um, clip where he was talking about the Big Bang. Yeah. Right before he commented about. Uh, the the hurricane forming an airplane. Yeah. He was saying that the Big Bang Theory was the belief that there was a series of explosions and eventually yeah. one of those explosions resulted in us. Yeah. And I, I like <laughs> laughed so hard. I was like, what? Yeah, he's this, guy's, this guy's a doctor. He's got a he's got a PhD. Yeah. And he's running for president, which which oh, it's so scary. I, I think there should be a pre there there shouldn't be no religious test. I understand that. I think we should have an intelligence test. If you don't yeah. believe in the Big Bang, you don't get to run for president. I'm just saying that's a science thing. I mean, well, at least if you're if you're not, you know, some of these guys, I'm amazed that they're even in office to begin with, with with the way they handle things. I mean, damn. yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's just insane the way that they make policies, or they, you know, it's just with all of these social issues that are going around with Planned Parenthood and whatnot, not yeah. to change the subject or anything, but um, well, it it's just um, subject, insane so. that these people even have power at all. Yeah. You know? One of the one of the nut jobs that's actually in charge of education in this country is one of these fucking nut job believers who thinks that evolution is a lie. Yeah. He well, said it, it came from the pit of hell. Shay. Yeah, the devil's just placing those transitional fossils in the ground. Just to trick us. <laughs> yep. You know, the thing is that they don't understand is if we say found a rabbit that's from today in a lower layer where like where the stegosauruses were found would definitely throw evolution into question. But it doesn't because it, it, it's a set layer system. Yeah, they, they've, they they this has all been worked out. They they figured this shit out. Speaking of that, let me let me play the, the Carson evolution one here. That'll work. I personally believe that this theory that Darwin came up with was something that was encouraged by the adversary. The and adversary. It has become what is scientifically politically correct. Amazingly, there are a significant number of scientists who do not believe it, but they're afraid to say anything. I don't understand when he talks. Yeah, and he. It sounds like he's just stringing words together. Yeah, and he says, <laughs> "Notice how he said there. Well, there's the scientists that don't believe evolution. You know, he's okay with the scientists that don't believe it. He he, he praises the scientists that agree with him, not the scientists that actually sit out there and fucking do the goddamn work. How is exactly. evolution scientifically politically correct? Uh, 
that that's doesn't even make was, sense. That's what, yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. How's evolution being politically correct? Man? Because <laughs> nowadays, it, it's it, it, in this day and age, dumb is the new black. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> what if one of these GOP people said we aren't supposed to fly? God didn't make us to fly, so we shouldn't. We should get rid of airplanes. You know that's a gr- that's a great would, point. Would anybody would anybody pay any attention to this person? No, of course not. Of course not. You know, and let's just change some of those wording from the first clip there. If instead of you know the Muslim, if he had said Christian, and then oh, people would be saying, yes. "Oh no, you can't do that." No, 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 no. And you know the thing is, when he said that Muslims should not be allowed to run or be in charge, Ted Cruz himself said, uh, "Dude, no, you you can't say that. You know that's that that's against the law. You you have to let them be president either way, because you know no religious death. When you get a spanking from Ted Cruz, then you know you fucked up." <laughs> I know, well, right? Carson's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. I was just agreeing. Go ahead. Go ahead, Connie. So, uh, Carson was actually asked, well, okay, well, you know, he, and Carson tried to flip the question and say, well, you know, if we're talking about a Christian, you know, I, his answer was that um, he, but he was responding to it, but he rephrased the question. He said, I would not vote for a theocracy. He inserted the word theocracy instead of just saying, would you vote for somebody who was Muslim who was running for president? Right. And he tried to cover his bases by saying, well, you know, I don't want to put any one uh, religion in charge. And he didn't he didn't directly address the question. It was another clip I saw and I thought, oh, you sly little son of a. Yeah, he he, sw- he, yeah. he played this. He played this word game there. He did. Yeah. Dawkins dog from the chat room said there should be a test for political office. You must have uh, once put in your penis in a dead pig's head. That's how we run things in the UK. <laughs> is that is that pigs in a blanket? That's that's a pig in a blanket there. <laughs> no, that's 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 what I call a corn dog. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> I guess if you're from Oklahoma. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, if you're from Oklahoma or Tennessee, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and, and the thing is. Uh, Trump has been going on uh, this too. He w- actually got asked about uh, Muslims at a conference here. Let me just bring him up real quick. Can you imagine uh, uh, supporting uh, or being comfortable if a uh, if a Muslim ever became president of the United States? Um, I can say that you know it's something that at some point could happen. We'll see. I mean, you know, it's something that could happen. Would I be comfortable? I don't know if we have to address it right now, but I think uh, it is certainly something that could happen. You said you'd had no problem putting a Muslim I mean, in your cabinet. Some people have said it already happened, frankly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh. that was the wrong clip, but either way. That was not the wrong clip. Oh, God. That was the wrong clip. I apologize. But anyway, okay. either way, he, he's saying that uh, Obama is a Muslim, which even if he was, it wouldn't fucking make a goddamn fucking difference because he's of the Jan, establishment clause. he drinks beer and he... Yeah, I'd like to. I have never seen a Muslim ever drink beer. In fact, it was. I, I remember seeing this one clip from this uh, this one Muslim imam, and he said he was talking to this guy. He says, oh, "I like to drink and do this and whatever." And he said, "Well, you just come and become a Muslim, and we'll take care of all those problems for you." So he comes back and says, "Okay, well, if I, then uh, I become a Muslim, uh, but I still want to drink beers and everything like that." He says, "Well, then if you do this shit, we're gonna have to kill you." Because then that'll that'll keep you from doing and drinking and doing all those things. Because they're not allowed in our religion. So if you become a re- this religion, you're a dead man if you decide to drink. And if uh, Obama was a Muslim, then the imams and whatever would be going fucking batshit crazy, offering saying, "Hey, we got to go and kill the president of the United States because he's a Muslim. He's he's been seen drinking beer, like you said, and things like that." I've I've always talked about when it comes to Obama, I've always talked about, well, hey, man, what if the last day he's in office, he's giving a speech, right? And, he, and at the end of the speech, he tells everybody, oh, by the way, I'm atheist and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the Republicans, that, since they're in charge right now, they'd probably make a law. Oh, no, no we, we, he was an atheist this whole time. Shit, we, let's change the law. So this way he has to go get a real job. We, we won't make sure oh, he doesn't get any supporting money afterwards. 
because you know the presidents after they leave office they get paid uh, they get a salary for life you know they're basically taken care of for the rest of their lives oh yeah so exactly. and they'll they'll probably say oh well if anybody comes out as an atheist or any other religion than Christian then we can say uh, you don't get that government check anymore I'm just I don't know if that was they'd actually do that but hey you know it's possible with the fucking uh, some of these nut jobs out there yeah. <laughs> Going back to, to Carson Trier just for a second here. And I did say Carson had doubled down. He said on uh, yeah. when he doubled down on his comment, despite the backlash, he says, I do not believe Sharia is consistent with the Constitution of this country. He said in an interview with The Hill, uh, referencing the Islamic law derived from the Korean and tradition of uh, Korean and traditions of Islam. Muslims feel that their religion is very much part of their public life and what you do as a public official and that's inconsistent with our principles in our constitution. You know, and the thing is though when he said that, replace that word muslim with christian and you get exactly the same fucking thing. You get these people like Kim Davis, I, I know where I didn't want to bring up Miss Potato Head, but oh, yeah, come yeah. on, you know you did. Yeah, it's, but she did she we she get, we can't quit her. Yeah. She basically did the same thing. She did her own version of Christian Sharia, and she put her religion above her public life. What difference is it? None. And then we'll justify he, many atrocities under the guise of belief, be they social ideals or religious. And to combine those two impugns a person or a movement with incredible audacity. Yeah. Look at the doe-eyed way Kim Davis defends her out-and-out -out bigotry against homosexual rights. It's just yeah, that it's why it's why religion and politics need to firmly be distanced, and uh, it's just it's uh, it's why our founding fathers penned a constitution of the day, why they did right. So now I, I, there's another part of the quote here he's, where Carson he said where this is where he doubles down basically. He said the only exception he'd make is if there was a Muslim running for public office. He'd publicly reject all tenets of Sharia and lived in a life that is consistent with that. Basically, that's what he did. He he basically just said the same fucking thing. He just he just doubled down on this whole process there. Yeah, I think I don't know, man. He just that guy. I don't understand. I hope a person like him never becomes president. No, I I hope not either because people like him do not belong in public office because they put their religion. First, I, yep. I've had conversations with people who said, when you enter the courthouse, you're to leave your religion and religious beliefs outside. And then you just word by the word of law. I've had religious nutjobs say, why can't they believe what they believe in their public office? Like, think about it for a fucking minute. Think about it for just more than put two more than two brain cells together. OK, you cannot do that. You cannot judge somebody based on your fucking belief. You have to base them on what is uh, the fucking law. But the problem yeah. is, is that religious people get their morality from religion, and they don't. They can't separate it out. They don't. They don't have morality outside of it. Or at least, I'm sorry, not all religious people, but more fundamentalist beliefs right. say that this is what dictates my everyday life. And you know, and the thing is, Connie, if these people actually read their Bibles and found out where the their, their morality is, they'd find out how immoral their morality is based on their religion. Yep. Yeah, I know. I mean, think about it. I mean, let's just go Old Testament for just a moment. Oh, you heard a voice in your head told you to kill your son. Okay. The, the, hey, that's some morals you got there. Oh, but then that's they say, well, God stopped him, right? Or an angel stopped him. You shouldn't have, if any deity supposedly says in your mind, says, hey, I want you to kill your kid. That's the wrong deity you should be listening, yeah. not, not should be listening to. Well, that's something I've never really understood either. I mean, they put Abraham on a pedestal you right. know, for what he did, basically. But someone like Andrea Yates, who had the same claim, they put her in a mental asylum and jail. Yep. You know, what's the difference between the two? The fact that she uh, did kill him. Well, she said God told her to do it. Well, what if God told her to do it, you know? Right. And that's that's where the hypocrisy comes in. Right. And, you know, that, and that's the thing is, that's like uh, that other, uh, Jephthia. He said he'd kill the first thing that walked out of his house, and it was his daughter. Yeah. And he had to kill her because he promised God that he'd kill the first thing that came out. I mean, where was these angels, you know, where were these angels to say, hey, Jephthia, don't kill your daughter? Oh, that's right. We only kill the women in this book. Yeah. 
crazy stuff. Yeah, speaking of crazy, I've got another one here from uh, Carson here. This is the one where he talks about the Big Bang. Now, what about the Big Bang theory? I, I find the Big Bang really quite fascinating. I mean, here you have all these highfalutin scientists, and they're saying that there was this gigantic explosion and everything came into perfect order. <laughs> no now, one these says are the that. the same scientists who go around touting the second law of thermodynamics. He doesn't know those. Which is law. entropy, which says that things move toward a state of disorganization. So now you're going to have this big explosion and everything becomes perfectly organized. <laughs> and when you ask them about it, they say, well, the, the, we can explain this based on probability theory. Because... If there's enough big explosions over a long enough period of time, over billions and billions of years, one of them will be the perfect explosion. <laughs> no, and I say, so what you're telling me is if I blow a hurricane through a junkyard there enough it is. times, over billions and billions of years, eventually, after one of those hurricanes, there'll be a 747 fully loaded and ready to fly. Well, after billions of years. Well. Exactly. But, I mean... It's even more ridiculous than that because our solar system, not to mention the universe outside of that, is extraordinarily well organized to the point where we can predict 70 years <laughs> when a comet is coming. God damn, now, man. That type of organization to just come out of an explosion? What? I mean, you want to talk about fairy tales. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Hypothetically speaking, you know, say if this God did exist hypothetically, when he was passing out brains, uh, Ben Carson thought he said trains, so he took the first one out of town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an old, that's an old ad hominem. I love it. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, if he had billions and billions of years to uh, for a tornado to go through a junkyard, something might assemble. Yeah. Would it be an airplane? I don't know. It'll, but the thing is, and the, the the thing about the comet is, you know, the, we have these things called guns, and we can figure out trajectories of these things because if you shoot it, it goes in a straight line. It doesn't go, oh, okay, I'm just going to go meander around and then uh, go several different directions. It, if a gun yeah. did that, you would not take it hunting. That's right. <laughs> you, <laughs> you would just, like, you'd have to this thing is Right. That's exactly. It. That's exactly it. Comets are the same thing. They're trapped in a gravitational well, and they come zooming through because we can predict those because they they follow a certain course, a certain path. Well, Big Bang Theory or you know, evolution is more like Yahtzee. When you're playing Yahtzee and you get three sixes, you're not going to throw all five dice back in. You're going to keep those three sixes and throw the other two dice back in. It's, right. it's selection. Right. That's a good point, yeah. Connie. I like that. I've never heard oh, that before. You. Evolution oh, is like I, Yahtzee. Kind of, thank you. It made it up today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it, it's my simple <laughs> way because there's a, another guy, CDK107, you know, 007, who actually made a very complex... Uh, thing about the, the the blind watchmaker and he was saying well you know it's not like evolution is resetting every time because obviously if it's selected for certain things then those things don't get thrown back into the mix right and so i was like well that's kind of like yahtzee so and you know the thing is he says you know all these perfect explosions and everything but that doesn't make any sense but uh god man a god coming down and taking going Oh, I'm just gonna poof shit into existence, and then oh, I, I've I've figured out how I can do all this shit, but I've got to take a rib from a man that I've created out of dust, which I don't know why he needed dust to begin with, and then and then pull a rib out of the man to make a woman. I mean, yeah. can he just like poof th that one into existence again? Oh, that's right, he did that once with Lilith, Adam and Lilith. That's what, <laughs> that's what yeah. makes mankind um, unique. Yeah, it's, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just Lilith. Yeah, I, I well, that's the, and that's the other thing. I mean, the Lilith story. We don't have that because somebody in the Middle Ages decided that that story was not by divine inspiration. Decided that story was not really what God wanted to say. Right. 
Yeah, well, yeah, well, I, from so what bad. I hear. Yeah, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was done. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, well, yeah, because Lilith, you know, she she didn't like any, from what I hear, she didn't like anybody telling her what to do. And, yeah. And it, she was uh, extremely disobedient. So they don't want to put a woman who thinks for herself in the Bible. Hell no. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's exactly right, uh, Tarvin. His analogy is just another watchmaker argument. I I saw that video. I was like, he, I was like, you fucking. He don't tell me he just made the watchmaker argument. I'm like, what? What I want to know is why is he blowing hurricanes in a junkyard? He has nothing to do, apparently. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of dirty. <laughs> you know, because it's junkyard. Yeah. How you like a flying? Uh, flying a, a 450 with a four-barrel carburetor upside your head. You go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got uh, I've got another clip here from uh, Trump here, but you know I I could have grabbed clips from Mike Huckabee, but if if we did that and played all the clips that came from him, we would be here for the next 16 hours just going Can through. Just vote that Huckabee needs to go back to preaching from a pulpit somewhere. Yeah. He does. He was a preacher. And the thing was, with him, he was the assistant governor, governor-elect, whatever. He was, the, he was next in line, and when I understand the way this was. And the governor, who was governor of Arkansas, was only there like for like a hot minute because Huckabee turned him in or got him fired or whatever. He got him to, to quit his job so he could be governor. So yeah. that's the only reason why he became governor of Arkansas because he got the previous governor out somehow. Well, Huckabee, Huckabee should just uh, crawl right back up into uh, Kim Davis's skirt and stay there. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Thanks for that visual. <laughs> <laughs> the eye of the tiger. I don't know. Well, just just like the other day. The other day, uh, someone asked me, would you, would you, you know, just out of thin air, they asked me, would you have sex with Kim Davis? And I told him, shit, I'd rather have sex with a fucking blender, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you could do, you could I, do worse. The, I don't want, I don't want to even... The sex life of that goes on behind these these. Uber, well, I, I'd cameras. rather have sex with a camel. At least they spit, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's hit that four at least four or five times. So. Anyway, there. Uh, I got this clip from Trump. Uh, from Trump here, I'll play him. This is the other one I wanted to play. Anyway. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. This is man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. Wow. The, 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 the nut jobs at that conference. This is the, the clip I was going to play earlier. <laughs> The, the thing is here, he is saying, oh, we're going to get rid of the Muslims. I'm like, I can't fucking believe you. I really what? don't. <laughs> you, you can't just say, okay, all you Muslims, you need to leave. You know, we did this. We did something like this in World War II. We locked up everybody that was Japanese or Japanese descent because we were at war at that time. I'm not saying it was a good thing to do. I'm just saying that's what they did. I'm speaking as a, in context of of what happened. I'm not saying it was a good thing. And if he became president, could you imagine what he would do about rounding up all the Muslims in this country and then trying to ship them out or intern them? Yeah. Well, I recently heard that he mentioned that he loves Muslims. I'm not sure how true that is. But when I heard that part, it seems like he can't even he, he's not even coherent enough to become a president because, you know, he's he basically saying, oh, we're going to do these things over here and we're going to do those things over there and under these things. And we're going to try these things without even mentioning shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, Trump is such a fucking whinier. 
He's such a whiner. Oh, the people are fucking you. They treated me bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fox News is just, they're just not taking, talking nice about me. I'm like, you want to be president of the free world. And if somebody says something bad about you, what are you going to do? Oh, you said something bad. Well, I, I, I can't just complain about it. I fucking just go with the nuclear option. Yeah. Ugh. Speaking of people who are trying to do this kind of stupid shit, there's uh, Carly Furina. Fiorina. Fiorina. Oh, shit. Yeah, she's Fiorina. Fiorina, whatever her name is. I'm just gonna call her. <laughs> I'm just gonna call her Potato Head Number Two. Um, <laughs> when she was asked about because Carson came out with his thing about the Muslims and everything, she starts off with, "Well, I think it's wrong." It says in our Constitution that religion cannot be a test for office. Okay, she gets that right. But then she completely contradicted herself. She says, I actually believe that people of faith make better leaders. Really? Like, look at all those people over in uh, Islam and what everything like that. Those people are yeah. religious. I do, and do like, you think those countries are really good in shape right now? No. Yeah. Well, just like me, I did a recent video on a... Uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, mm -hmm. how they, uh, uh, the U United Nations was, uh, appointed, uh, some guy from Saudi Arabia as a leader of their human rights panel or some shit yeah. like that. I like, what? Eh. You know, a lot of these people only want a theocracy. That's all they want. Yeah. They don't want, they don't want a secular nation. They don't want anything resembling, you know, secularism. They just want their crap. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, beheadings are a right, not a privilege. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're you're taking me. You're taking away my right to behead people. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, they 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 keep going on. Oh, we don't want Sharia law, but you want Christian Sharia. And then, I know that's something I totally don't understand. Is they're so afraid of Sharia law, and uh, and the separation of religion and state is something that would protect them from Sharia law. Right. And yet yeah. they're like. Like, no, 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 we have to get rid of that because that's a bad idea. And uh, I'm really afraid of Sharia law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're willing to impose Christian version of Sharia law every chance they get. Right. It's and, okay if it's my team. It's yeah. It's okay if it's my tribe. Exactly. And, and the, 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 the reason why they say that is because this is a quote-unquote Christian nation. Bullshit. It's not well, a Christian I mean, nation. It, it, all they have to do is just check the Treaty of Tripoli, Article 11. I've tried. I've said that to them. I've even pointed it out to them. I've read it to them. I've sent it to them, and they say, "Well, it just means that just because we have a, a wide variety of Christians, we have the Christian. The country is like 90 percent Christian. It's like, no. First off, it's like 80 percent Christian, maybe 76 percent. Actually, actually, I checked recent polls on it, and it's 72 percent. 72 percent dropping fast like a stone. Yep. Can we ask the Native Americans what they were before we came here? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? How it's the just... fuck are you going to discover something when there was people already living on it? Right, exactly. Exactly. They were the first ones there. So, But anyway, the, the thing is, though, uh, they, they say that this was, like I said, the, this is the Christian nation because the populace is more Christian than any other religion. So, and I, I pointed this out to him. I tried to. I said, so what happens when this becomes uh, more Islamic? Uh, there's more is people from Islam living here than Christians or people of no faith. Does it become a no faith nation or does it become an Islamic nation at that point then? And they're like, no, it's still a Christian nation. I'm like, fucking piece of shit. You just can't keep your story straight, can you? Yeah, it's obvious. You know, it's obvious that they really don't know shit. I mean, the founding fathers... I, uh, they escaped Europe. They yeah. escaped when they left Europe. They they wanted to escape the tyranny of Christianity. So when they got here, they didn't want it, the same exact thing to happen. That's why they put all of the things into place. But do you think they're doing that now? No. All right. Exactly. This whole thing about going after a certain religion is not new to this country. Almost 100 years ago, and next month will be in, uh, on uh, October 12th, will be 100 years from now. This was said by President Teddy Roosevelt in the midst of the anti Catholic hysteria. So, for you Christians out there, there was a lot of anti Catholic stuff, too. Of course, there's a lot of Christians out there to say, Catholics aren't real Christians. Uh, no true Scotsman fallacy, but I digress on that for the moment. 
He said the Constitution explicitly forbids the requiring of any religious test as a qualification for holding office. To impose such a test by popular vote is as bad as to impose it by law. To vote either for or against a man because of his creed is to impose upon him a religious test and is a clear violation of the spirit of the Constitution. He said this before the Knights of Columbus on uh, October 12, 1915, almost 100 years ago. And he had it exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> and he was a Republican. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something I thought about uh, today, too, is that, you know, we're talking about Muslim Muslims being, you know, a president. I remember that it was a really big deal that Kennedy... Uh, John Kennedy was a Catholic. Yeah. There was a huge prejudice against Catholics. And uh, so, yeah. you know, yep. I don't know. I think the Muslims might be the newest kids on the block. And it's unfortunate that a lot of radical radicals are giving them a bad name. Mm-hmm. But it, it's still, we come back to the idea that the idea of combining religion and politics is a really bad idea. It's, right. it's too much power in one place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's um, and because and especially when religion is so touchy feely, ideology is what I believe, but I can't prove it because I've got an invisible person telling me what to do over here, yeah. and that's why we're doing it. You know? That that's the reason why they were so afraid of Kennedy being in office because he was a Catholic. They were afraid that he was going to get his marching orders from well, the Vatican. From the Pope. Yeah, the Pope was going to yeah. whisper, be whispering in his ear, "Hey, Mister Kennedy." Yeah, we need you to like you know put up all the borders and and make everybody pray at dawn or whatever. And we, speaking of the Pope, he was he's been here in the United States as of right now. Although I saw this great clip uh, the other day of, uh, after about a week of uh, the Pope being in the United States, he's in a little scooter and he's all super fat now. So. <laughs> 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 too many casserole dinners at churches. I yeah, too many casserole dinners. Too much. Too many visits at the local BK and the uh, and the Mickey D's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you has. I bet you has a double quarter pounder with some fries at home in his refrigerator. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's in New York and New Jersey. He's probably eating White Castle. Yeah, you know the the thing is though. I I heard him speak and. I don't mean to make this sound bad. I know English is not one of his natural languages. I mean, he speaks so many. I mean, no, he, the world speaks English, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, oh, it does. That's, that's our that's our arrogance. Right? That, that's right. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, but the thing is, I was listening to him, I was, I, and I didn't see. I actually didn't see the video at first. I was listening to a podcast, and I was hearing him speak. And there's this cartoon from. The early 1970s, maybe came back from early 60s, and, and uh, Speedy Gonzalez and his slower brother, uh, or cousin rather, uh, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he was like the he was like really super slow, but his mind is like really super fast, so he like he could like hypnotize the cat. Sen- Senor Slowpoke, that was it. Senor Slowpoke, and that's what he, that's a picture of what I heard. The, the picture that came to my mind when I heard him speaking. Slowpoke <laughs> Rodriguez? Yeah, Slowpoke Rodriguez, that's it. Yeah. I, I, because he was speaking so slowly, That's the, and the the voice was very similar to it. So that's what came to my mind. I, I No no disparaging against him directly, but, I mean, that's just, that's just how my mind works. I associate sounds with images on certain things. And usually it's cartoons because I fucking grew up on cartoons. So, <laughs> <laughs> like underdog. Yes, underdog. Exactly. Contact us by email at ppappodcast at gmail dot com or on Twitter as at Packard Folks at. Like us on Facebook dot com slash Packard Folks at. Call our Google Voice and leave a message at six six two seven zero nine ppap. Or 662-709-7727, and we will respond to it on the show. Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time, join us live at vonlive.tv slash Packard Set. During the show, you can share your thoughts with us by calling 857-216-3200 using PIN number 35368. 
or on uberconference.com slash packardpokesat. For links to the stories, visit our show page at packardpokesat.wordpress.com. You can help support the show by purchasing merchandise from cafepress.com slash packardpokesat or make a donation to the show at patreon.com slash packardpokesat. If you can't afford any money, why not share the show with your friends and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spreaker, and on YouTube. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. Another one of these people who is running for office is Santorum, uh, or Sanitarium. I forget which uh, how it's pronounced anyway. Uh, <laughs> he belongs in a crematorium. Yes, yes. He definitely belongs somewhere. He, he thinks that marriage equality and Satan is using uh, universities, mainline Protestant churches, and the government to extinguish conservative values. You know what's extinguishing conservative values? Uh, people waking up and seeing that you're fucking batshit fucking crazy, Santorum, yep. sanitarium, whatever. Yep. Um, but Tim, you know, I don't know, man. He's just another mindless fucking knuckle-dragging idiot. Yes. You know, and with all of these policies that he's trying to come up with, and he's, I heard that he was trying to push to get uh, Planned Parenthood uh, uh, defunded, all of these idiots, Mike Huckabee, him, and a couple of other people, um, because they somehow had it in their minds that Planned Parenthood is uh, uh, selling fetuses on the black market. They're so fucking stupid. Yeah, man. they yeah they, they, they look at these doctored videos, and you can tell that they're fucking doctored. And even though they tried to doctor the fuck out of them, they, they still couldn't go, I gotcha, because there's nothing to, I gotcha with. Yeah, they couldn't do nothing with them. Right. I mean, it, it, they're stupid. And it, 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 it was even, uh, I read it in a couple articles where, you know, the uh, videos were already debunked. But these guys, man, they still want to do it. They want to take, there's what, four abortion clinics. There's four Planned Parenthoods. Here in the state of Texas, mm -hmm. and that's it. Four of them. That's it. That's a big state to try to uh, use four uh, clinics for that. Yeah. And you know the thing is, they they're against uh, they're against uh, condoms and things like that. It's like, hey, if you teach them about how to use their body properly and you know how to protect themselves, you don't get as many abortions. But now because of yeah. the, they if they want to get rid of Planned Parenthood, guess what? The abortion rates are going to go up. Yeah, and it's plus only about three percent of Planned Parenthood is used for abortions. Right, um, um, and the it's rest not... of it's you know medical needs for women. You got your like your mammogram. Yep. You got like all kinds of other things that women need. You know. Yep, it, it's a war on women on that part. And the, and the thing is, you said the five percent that is privately funded. It's not funded by the government because of some religious nut job that got into that was in office said, "Oh, we don't want the government to uh, fund abortions at all," and yeah. he got that passed through. And I forget what the, what his name is. I apologize, uh, but he got that pushed through, and that's why the Planned Parenthood cannot do any abortions with federal funds. Period. Yeah, they have <laughs> to do that through private funding. Well. Yep. Oh, man. Well, they only care about babies before they're born. Yeah. Let's just go to the smaller scale for just for a few moments. You know, sometimes you got cities, they have, like, religious uh, ceremony or whatever right before they start city business. They will do, like, a little prayer or whatever. In Coral Springs, Florida, uh, the council decided to end that practice because of, uh, of the offering the invocation at the opening of the council meetings. According to a uh, report, uh, this was on September 4th of this year. According to a report this week from Christian News Network, the decision came after a Satanist requested to lead the invocation. Bowing to the campaign of Satanist Chaz Stevens to force an end to the city council prayers by making a fiasco out of it. Uh, Cole Cable's mayor, Skip Campbell, says he did not want to spend thousands of dollars on lawyers' fees to fight Stevens' invocation request. And the... The, the Satanists, you guys are fucking brilliant in this regard. You guys are the perfect fucking yep. trolls on this. Because if you're going to put religious invocation into a city meeting and you say, okay, I want to put in an atheist uh, invocation or a Satanist invocation, yeah. and then they, they don't say like, oh, well, no, we, we're, we'll, we'll write it so that we don't, no, they can't do that anymore. Well, guess what? 
if they can't do it, fucking neither can you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if they want to include, if they want to do it, they have to include everybody else. Dude. Yep. And this, They're, this actually, as far as I understand, as, as I remember, some town council got it all the way up to the Supreme Court, and they said, "Oh yeah, you can do this with the government meetings, or at least some of them anyway." I don't know which state it was. It was just in this one particular state. Uh, but I know that in New York, up in Goshen, um, they sued and they said, "Well, it's okay because we're going to let all religions do it." And they were like, "All right, well, if you're going to say that, we're going to take you up on it." And they've been like really pushing to get people to go up there and do invocations for every religion they can figure out. Like they've had Wiccans go up there, they've had Satanists go up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn! And they can't say no. That's right. They have to, they have yeah. to let them in. Yeah, and that, and this is like with the uh, down in what was it? I think it was in uh, Kansas. They wanted to put up the the. Uh, Big religious. Oh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. It was Oklahoma. Thank you. It was Oklahoma. They yes. wanted to put the uh, Ten Commandments on the lawn, and then the the Satanists said, "Okay, if you're gonna do that, then we want to put up our statue." And they they took them a while, but they said, "You know what? I guess we shouldn't put that stat those Ten Commandments <laughs> up there." So now they've got this big statue all set and ready to plant down somewhere, and uh, I guess they're just gonna take it somewhere else that they're, they're somebody else that's trying to do the same damn thing, and. Damn it, you you Satanists are damn good trolls when it comes to this shit. <laughs> I got to give you props on that. I got to give you props on that. Yep. I'd, I had my son sold on actually. Said, Maybe we should become Satanists, Mom. Because I said, <laughs> they're not actually, they don't actually worship Satan. They're kind of ironic, you know. Yeah. 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 They're kind of a troll religion. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They're the trolls. Well, there's actually, religion. I think, more than one camp of Satanists. Like some of them really are into yes. it. Like. I grew up on yeah. Death Men and I believe in the Dark Lord. And some of them are just like, yeah, we're just fucking around because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I want to hang with. I'm like, yes. I actually, I had a conversation uh, several months ago with somebody about that. He says, oh, no, this person actually says they actually believe. It's like, yeah, they're trolling you. Yeah. They're trolling you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you understand? They're trolling you. They say, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I believe it. Sure. Why not? It was yeah. in Florida that they... Uh, they were trying to distribute their coloring book to the grade yeah. school or something. Yeah, they were trying to. Yeah, yeah. it was. That's a, that's another. That's well, it's not it quite was, politics. It was a but, Satanist coloring book, right? Yeah, Satanist coloring yeah, book. Yeah, because yeah, the school was giving out Bibles. <laughs> yeah, the school's giving out Bibles, and they said, "Oh, well, if you're going to give out Bibles, we want to give out this uh, Satanist coloring book." You got to give those out. You got to give these out. Yeah, <laughs> I want one. Send well, one to well, me. If you guys want to give out Bibles, let's let, let us give out our copies of Anton LaVey's book. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cute little boy and a little girl, and there's Bahamut. There's like, you know, like aw. Can you connect the dots and make a make a um, inverted pentagram? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Religious equality. Yep. It, um, I've brought it up on the show before. It reminds me of uh, the everyone's a Christian fallacy. Yeah. Where you make a decision affecting the public on the assumption that everybody in the public is also a Christian just like you. Yeah. And what happens is it almost always backfires because then it, it, it opens up the door like, well, you can't just have a law for one religion. If you include one, you have to include them all. And uh, we covered it on the show a long time ago. I think it was the state of Louisiana right. passed a law where uh, they would give public funds to religious schools. Mm -hmm. And and they were like, oh, yeah, we're so for this. This is awesome. We're going to give public funds to religious schools. Well, immediately the like four Muslim schools in Louisiana put in for those funds. And they were like, well, equal prote equal protection under the law. You have to give us the funds, too. Yeah. And and the legislature ran back to to <laughs> ran back <laughs> into session to repeal that law so fast. Oh, yeah. They're like, they're like, back up, back up, back up. We made a big mistake. <laughs> Because <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't stand even giving a little bit of money to the to the to the Islamic schools. Yep. That yeah, that was Louisiana. Was that was entirely Lu to uh, Christian schools. Yeah, that was Louisiana, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, the state of Louisiana. Yeah, that's they, what I thought. They yeah, something at the at their state legislature where they were just like you know like haha like they were so triumphant when they passed it and everything, and uh, and then once it passed, like all these other schools were like, well, that means you can give it to us too. Right. That means you have to give it to us. Yeah, see, the thing is, it's like, oh, we'll put in this religion exception. And they think, oh, Christianity is the only one here. It's, I see Christians to the left of me, Christians to the right of me, Christians in front of me, Christians behind me. We're all here. We're all here. 
10th grade Where's social studies. That's Go right. Ahead. There's other religions in the world. I forgot <laughs> about that. <laughs> did, wait, did you send the invitation out to everybody? Did you hit all send? <laughs> Tar Tarvin from the chat room here said, uh, I heard someone say they are a Satanist because they are only a religion that accepts everyone. Yeah, they do. And they think this is a bad thing. It's like, oh, Satan just wants you. It's like, oh, okay. Doesn't your God supposedly want everybody to? He only wants you if you're in his special club. But Satan accepts everybody. Woo <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching a specific movie about Satan, not to change the subject too much, but... Um, he was in there, you know, right? And he's talking about, you know, uh, heaven may be closed to some people, but I'm always open. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I'm even open on Christmas. <laughs> was this a South, South Park movie? Oh, <laughs> oh man. It just, it, the, the fact is that we've got all these people who are in, we didn't even cover the whole field of all these people, but these are the most outspoken people. Uh, yeah. that are running right now, and they're in the top leaderboards. I mean, Car uh, Carly Furtina, or Fartface, I don't know what her fucking name is. Uh <laughs> Carly, I, I put uh, Hewlett Packard into the ground. Yeah, Carly, I put Hewlett Packard into the ground <laughs> is, uh, is one of the top contenders right now. And like I said, we didn't, even we didn't cover the rest of them because they're, so, they're running literally at 0%. Well, I could pretty much tell you who might win. Who do you think might win? It's either going to be Bernie Sanders or Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be oh, another please. Republican. Please. It definitely won't. I, I, I think it's going to be one of the two either. I think it, uh, it's going to come down to Bernie Sanders and uh, Hillary again. I'm yeah. eagerly following that whole uh, Trump and the veterans group thing. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, I think that might be... Uh, Either a chink in his armor or, or the beginning of the end for him. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, because it turns out it was just <clears throat> one guy, one guy with a PO box. <laughs> yeah, and he and apparently he hadn't uh, uh, sent in his taxes for like to the state or to the government for like four years. Wow. So yeah, we had his tax exemption status revoked. Yep, and he wasn't allowed to fundraise in California. Right, but Trump was at his fundraiser on the battleship Missouri in, in California. California. Right. He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't allowed to. But he, you still, even though you're a nonprofit, you still have to turn in some taxes of monies you get. It's that's that's why they were able to uh, turn it down again or revoke it because right. he he didn't turn anything into them. One of the most unfortunate things about charity uh, is that um, some of them aren't honest. Some of them are are bogus charities that are just looking for money, yeah. and mm -hmm. they spend very yeah. little, if any, money at all on on the actual work that they say they're doing. Yeah. And kind of like, one of the biggest scammer charities out there is uh, ones that say that they're for the veterans. Oh, yeah. Which is really, really tragic. It's so unfortunate because everybody wants to help the veterans. Everybody has, like, a big spot in their heart for them. Yeah. And, and there are legitimate, like, real good veterans organizations out there that are helping them. That if you give your money to them, that it's great. But there's so many out, like, hundreds or thousands that, that are just, like, you know, some asshole with a P.O. box who says, hey, I am so-and-so the veterans organization, and it's bullshit. Right. And it, it seems that Trump has aligned himself with one of these bogus groups, Yeah, which happens to be one guy. And, and then, yeah, and he, he, I, I think he's come out and he says, well, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know who this guy was. It's like, why wouldn't you do go and uh, fundraise for somebody you don't know who they are? I mean, he's yeah. not he's a, a Trump is not that stupid. And he just delegates shit. He doesn't. Yeah. He's not. I don't know. Yeah, Trump, but he's right, running sorry. on a platform of our current politicians are so stupid. They're getting made fun of and taken advantage of by other world leaders. He's not stupid because he right. knows how to make a deal. He's going to go out there and the whole world is going to do what he wants. Exactly. Because he knows how to work a deal and he he could be trusted. But he can't even figure out who he's like raising money for. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. Exactly. He, well, he, that he, that fundraiser you guys were talking about is a lot like the one uh, uh, Jared Fogel was a part of. You know that uh, Subway dude. Oh called? yeah, yeah. Yes. He had that. <laughs> the uh, seventy percent of the funds that were being donated to that charity were actually going into the pocket of the president or whoever the hell it yes. was. Yeah. Yeah, that's bullshit. but but that's yeah that's but that's a whole other issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I was just saying well, on the ground. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that too, though, actually. But I did. I didn't want to bring it up because you know it's not our topic tonight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, Dawkins uh, said here, people didn't think Obama would win the first time. The electric can uh, surprise. Yes, that's very true. Honestly, I think if it comes down between Bernie and Hillary, I think it might be Hillary. And that's just my opinion, though. I think it's going to be Hillary. Between the, if it comes down between Hillary, those two, whoever the GOP has, but yeah. if, if if Hillary uh, taps Bernie, there would be an unstoppable force. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or if Bernie I, taps Hillary, but I doubt she would want to do that. She'd be so pissed off. She'd be like, "Oh fuck you!" Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> right. no. she's like, you're "Not right. again." <laughs> so, Maybe like, "Will yeah, you be my secretary of state?" Been number two. <laughs> you know, well, just, well, well, with Hillary, I think she has a pretty good chance of getting in because, for one thing, she's a corporatist. Yeah, them big them big bankers really love her ass. Oh yep. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 She's she's personal friends with the Waltons who own Walmart. Yep. Oh. Uh, Torvin from the chat room said when Obama won the uh, won the Republicans started scrambling to fix their gerrymandering, which is very true. They made sure that wherever you voted, they even if you even if the Democrat fucking won, even if the Democrat fucking won in the in their area or their district. It still went to the Republican because of all the fucking gerrymandering they did. They said, okay, they basically gave all the votes to the Republican, even if he fucking didn't even come close. Yeah. Which is utter, total bullshit. I agree. I agree totally. Yeah. Uh, Torvin said if Hillary, ta if Hillary taps Bernie, she does seem like the, ty the type that would be into, into pegging. <laughs> 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 I thought that maybe Scott Walker had a shot for going all the way on the Republican side, but uh, he I didn't, just dropped out. No, he did not. He didn't. Yeah, he, he wasn't he didn't. doing well. No, he couldn't answer questions right. No, nah, yeah. he was. He's like they. They asked him in in England, "Do you believe in evolution?" They said he goes, <laughs> uh, "Well, that's. I'm just here to talk about policy." He's like. I, what I don't the think fuck politicians you should about? have opinions on that. I don't like, think opinions. What? What? <laughs> of course you should. You, what are you, you're a politician. You have an opinion on everything. <laughs> Reality is not an opinion. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Scott Walker had one job. It was to be a puppet, and he failed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> And the, I, not to be, not to go to, uh, I, some people are going to be really mad at me when I say this, but I mean, he, if you've ever seen Scott Walker, he's got this expression like, uh, I just hear. I don't really know what's going on. I got. I don't know. I don't know. He I don't know. Like Up until he, he went to the head. national level, he's been a good politician. He managed to win every election he ran for. He survived his uh, recall, but this this here is yeah his from first gerrymandering huge failure. Yeah, he, he only survived because of gerrymandering. And and well, that's that was one thing. The other reason why is because we had several people here in Wisconsin all running for Democrat for the democratic nod and it's scott walker just sat back and went, i'm the only guy in my field no one's running against me i don't have to worry about them so let them th that's <laughs> it you know and the the democrats here we just couldn't pull it together we were like we're gonna we're fighting amongst ourselves to see who we're gonna put in office uh, to to go against walker as like fucking you should have just this should have been settled before the the field even got opened up and this way we could have put all this money and resources towards that one person then scott walker would have been out on his fat fucking ass yeah but you know wisconsin you fucked up that one time don't do it again that's it a warning like someone it looked like someone tried to suck his lips through a fucking straw man <laughs> <laughs> walker's a character i mean he is he is he is he is the character that is just you if. So on the Republican side, who do you think is going to make it? On the Republican side, it, it's going to come down between. Uh, I think Carson's going to go uh, beyond Trump if he doesn't drop out, which I don't think he will. I don't think Trump has legs. I don't. I think, yeah, I don't I think, think he's he does gonna either. Fizzle eventually. Yeah, and I Carson, think, I don't see making it either. I see. Probably Fina Arena. Everyone was talking good about her, like, mm -hmm. oh, she's so good, she's so good. Um, if like some of the stuff she said in the debates and some of the stuff she said since the debates, it's like, wait, mm -hmm. what? Like she she clearly doesn't know what she's talking about. Right. I think if it comes, you think that? Oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna. Say, say, oh. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I want to hear you randomly that, picking here, Connie. Um, Connie. It, it could come down between 
the GOP, look how progressive we are. We have a female candidate mm-hmm. or, right. or a black candidate. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if that's even a question. I don't know. You know what's really crazy with the Republican candidates is you can you can look at some of the you know ones and you can say, well, that person is not very presidential because they're not well-spoken. They don't really seem to have a grasp of what they're talking about. But Sarah Palin was the vice presidential nod. Yeah. Like Sarah Palin was their pick for VP. And it's like, yes. it's so anything is possible, really, really. Like, like, yes. When it comes down to it, it's just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, uh, we haven't even seen the VP, you know, nominees. Oh, it's going to be one of the possible. people that ran already. God. Yeah. But I think. It's yeah. Scott Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who are, let's let's say let's take a next let's take a little prediction here. Who do you think is gonna be the next person to drop out? Oh, jeez. You think it's gonna be Huckabee? Uh, you think Huckabee's gonna drop out? I'll just yeah, say Huckabee. He, okay. He's prob- yeah, probably. Yeah, he's probably gonna. Gonna. I I say I say Jindal's gonna to drop out next. I say Jindal <laughs> drops out. He next. hasn't yeah. dropped out yet. He That's still hasn't. Dro- no, he's it's only been two uh-huh. so far. I mean, some of these people, they've gotten to the point where they have nothing in the polls, which and, and really the polls don't mean anything. It's when they start voting in the early primaries. But um, the, like a lot of these people, they have no money. They're just registered with the FEC. They're in the race, technically. They sometimes show up at these debates. And, and you know, yeah. like, like when they're not doing that, they're mm-hmm. just sitting at home watching cable news like everybody else. Right. <laughs> yeah, kind of like Mitt Romney. He's yeah. over there running for president, and he couldn't even afford to pay his fucking employees. Yeah, no, that was um, yeah, that, no, no, was no, that was uh, Perry. Perry, that was Perry. Oh, Rick Perry. Yeah, my yeah. bad. Yeah, it was Rick Perry. Rick well, Perry. there, there's, there, there's Ricks and Daves and whatever's on there. You know, you can't pick them all out. You know, uh, Harry Walker <laughs> dropped out so far, but I haven't even heard anything about Jindal in a while. Yeah, my goodness, I forgot he, he was thinks even he in. he thinks he's tanned and ready to go, but. Whatever. Well, I love his I love his uh, portrait that's hanging evidently. <laughs> uh, he's whiter than Michael. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we do have to uh, we do have to uh, uh, cut this to a close. But I want to oh. thank everybody that uh, that I came. I want to go on record though. I think it's going to be Jeb. You think Jeb's next to dro- to drop no, out? No, I think I think Jeb's going to be the nom. You think Jeb? I think he's oh, he's got oh. the money, the backing, and the smarts to last long enough while all the circus is going on to be the guy, the last guy standing. That's what I think is going to be it. Yeah, Torvin said Jindal thinks he's people. <laughs> 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 very bad, Torvin. Very I bad. I go with Joe because I think that Jeb has the money. Yeah, yeah. that's well. Look at it. Well, for one thing, look at his family. You yep. know, the Bush yeah. dynasty. It's They're all, all a bunch of rich backing, backing. It's all who you know. Backing. Yeah. Like Walker had the Koch brothers and I thought, yeah. "Oh, well Walker's going to be their guy, but now he dropped out. So now the Koch brothers are going to be sitting there like, "All right, who's next?" And they I think they're going to go for Jeb. Hmm. Quite uh John, who do you think is going to uh, who do you think is going to drop out next and who do you think is going to uh be the uh the front runner for the Republicans? Yeah. Well, I think well, for a while there, I was thinking it might have been Trump, but he's running too hot right now. It'll take a while before he drops out. But uh, right. I think, well, I'm actually probably, um, what's his face? The one that you were talking about earlier, uh, uh, Jindal. Jindal. You think Jindal will be dropping out first or, or next? or? Yeah, next. Okay. Who? How... And then the primary? Yeah. I'd have to probably go with Bush, probably. You think Bush? Yeah. Okay, we got yeah, two yeah. for Bush. Connie, right. who do you think is going to drop out next, and who do you think is going to uh, uh, go to the primary? Uh, I think Trump is going to get bored. Because <laughs> <And, laughs> so he wants to just t- tell everybody they're fired. And You're all fired! Think, I'm firing you all! I'm not doing this anymore! You're all fired! I don't like <laughs> these low poll numbers. I like a winner. So I have to be a winner where the poll numbers are good. <laughs> Fox News is not being nice to me! I'm out of here! They hurt my feelings. I'm not going to be on Fox and Friends anymore. <laughs> I'm taking my marbles and I'm going home. Laugh, Hold on. Let I me laugh. check my Twitter. <laughs> I, 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 laugh if he got his, I laugh if he got the presidency right. And he's over there sitting in the Oval Office the first day. And he looks up at everybody and he goes, you're fired. <laughs> 
Some people want, him, want Trump to be president just for the lulls. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. That's the reason they watch this stuff anymore is because he's on. It's like, what's he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Connie, I'm sorry. Trump, who, who do you Trump, think? You, who, this is your cabinet. You elected them. They're all fat. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that, Trump. I say I'm the president. I say the fire, the fire. Right now, I don't know. <laughs> I tell you what, anybody who can run faster than my wig after it jumps off of my head, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's running across the floor. Oh, no. I, 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 this from Connie's like little... thoughtful answer is brought to you by our jokes. <laughs> <laughs> tw- tw- quick thing here from the t- chat room. Torvian said from Trump's Twitter has uh, been trying to treat, been treating me very unfairly. And I have therefore decided that I won't be. Any more on Fox and Friends for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I heard about that too. All right, Connie, who, who do you think should be the front runner now? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going for Jeb Bush, and Bush uh, because he wants to have somebody who uh, who resembles a female uh, candidate, uh, Fiorino, who ran uh, Hewlett Packard into the ground. Okay, Jeb and Carly. Oh, and uh, and, and you thought Trump, and, so? You think and Trump's going to drop get, out? You think Trump's gonna yes. drop out, and then and then uh, uh, we got another one for Bush. Okay, all yeah, right. Another, uh, yeah. I don't you like a dropout. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I, captured. I wasn't captured, but I I <laughs> I don't like people who are captured in war. They're cowards. They're cowards. <laughs> <laughs> There's hundreds of thousands of dropouts. There's not enough winners. I like winners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we do have to bring this to a close. Uh, Quiet Atheist, where can they find your channel? At uh, YouTube.com slash The Quiet Atheist. All right. And your Twitter is just Quiet Atheist. Yeah, it's at The Quiet Atheist. Yeah. Yes. So you can follow him there, and you can find him up on YouTube. And uh, we'll be back next week. And I want to also before we before we go, I want to thank Connie and Joe for uh, joining me out here on the show tonight. And I uh, will be back next week with our regular longer show. And that's not uh, this. How long is it? <laughs> as long as it needs to be. <laughs> I heard about the Packard Pokes at long shows on the bathroom wall at the men's room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. There was an associated phone number. Yes. Yeah, the, the, what was it called? What are those things called? The phone number was right next to one of those glory holes. Yes. Yes. It, the phone it's... number was 662-709-7727. That's right. You call oh, that I'll number. Call, I'll call you here in a minute. Yeah, call. <laughs> yeah. If, if you if, call. If, right, if, if you if you want to leave a comment, call that number or leave it in the comment section here below on YouTube. And if your comment is an address to meet you, have cash <laughs> or a credit card. Credit card. I take. I, I'll take. Oh, I'll take cash too. I suppose. You got square too. You know? Yeah, square. Yeah, I, take, I got square. That's right. Little, little plastic. Thing. Yeah, I have one of those actually. So. Yeah, me too. I use it. <laughs> actually. I have it. It's uh, actually it's right here. <laughs> cash is cash is untraceable. That's right. Well, it is. It's un- well it is on untraceable. your bill. It'll come up as um, limo service. Yeah, it comes up on limo service. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll be back next week. This has been Packet Pokes that we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap.